All right, so looking at the second attack, uh, in this one, the threat has the opposite side, opposite side lead. So again, we're leading with our left foot, he's leading with our right foot, so he's mirroring us. However, he's gonna carry the knife in the uh, rear hand in this case, so the knife is far back away from us. And again, the big advantage here is that the uh, lead non-knife hand is close to our knife, and his knife has a long way to go uh, to get to us. However, this is still a tricky situation because we don't wanna be chopping up his lead hand and then exposing ourselves to an injury, uh, you know, at, again, at the benefit of only injuring his non-knife hand. Although we did do uh, feigning drills against fighters who lead with empty hand, feigning is not the strategy we're gonna use here uh, against this type of fighter. I mean, you can use feigning, uh, but we choose not to in this particular attack that we're showing. Uh, the tactic is to use our free hand against the threat's free hand in a manner that will allow us to flank his non-knife side to attack his neck. Uh, the threat will have to back off or bring his knife into the fight. If he backs off, we can use space to uh, escape or continue to pursue his flank with uh, a couple of step-throughs, uh, get us back to our original lead while taking opportunities to check and chop up his uh, lead side. Uh, if the threat attempts to bring his weapon on us, again, it's a long trip, and by uh, stepping through twice, again, we should be able to flank him or take his back while uh, having a chance to defang the snake or again, slashing away at exposed targets. Uh, if he catches off guard by attacking at the same time, we can spin off his center line uh, to avoid his attack and gain distance, again, while slashing away at those exposed targets of his uh, uh, lead side that doesn't have the weapon. Okay, so to perform this attack, what we're gonna do is we're going to do a step and drag towards the threat's <coughs> excuse me, near flank while using our empty hand to check his empty hand in front of his knife hand and then immediately thrust on angle six for the neck. So it's kind of like a little fake, uh, a little faint, where we're coming out here towards his empty hand, and immediately our, our other hand is going to be up and ready to attack. And again, if he comes in, we slash at the uh, knife hand. Uh, if he tries to back off, well, then we just slash at the empty hand. And then we continue our movement, trying to uh, immediately thrust on angle six for the neck. Now again, if, he, if, if we just catch him uh, to where he doesn't react in time, this first feint could actually get a hold of his hand and we could use that as almost a, a shield uh, from his knife hand. So uh, again, we should continue to maneuver to take his back for a reverse angle four slash. And again, we've got a hold of that empty hand, so that's going to protect us from the knife coming this way. Now, it is equally important to control on the knife hand shoulder. So again, if we get tight enough on his empty hand to hold it towards us, he's not gonna be able to spin away and get that knife onto us, okay? And if he spins into us, well, that will force us to move away again also. So we can do it that way. Or if we have space here, we're gonna to have to bring this hand across and check the back of his knife hand shoulder while slashing the throat. So we'll look at those, uh, we'll look at both of those. But again, you gotta control that knife hand shoulder either from that side or from the other side by keeping it close to your body. And again, your empty hand is going to uh, control that. And again, if he's got this knife hand here and we're back here, you gotta be careful about these reverse slashes and that's where it's real important or it is, uh, it is a good idea to get that left hand across. Now, me particularly, I don't like doing it. I would rather hook up on his, his empty hand uh, shoulder and just go for the neck and if he gets me with a poke or two, well, good for him. Uh, I'm gonna get that slash and I'm gonna get out of there. Of course, as I did that initial move by where I did the feint for the hand, again, if something comes in at us, boom, it's like an angle one defense. We chop on that, now we go to the side, we go back up to the top, we come around, we try to get him here. Uh, however, if he doesn't react in time, you're just gonna go for that hand and instead of this thing coming and slashing here, boom, it's gonna go right up into the neck as you flank him. Uh, if anything happens uh, where uh, he backs away, well, we're just gonna continue like this, trying to slash at his hand, and when we get to the side, then we'll go for the neck. Then again, we gotta lock up either his empty hand side, or we gotta get around to his knife, the back of his knife hand side, lock that up, finish with that uh, reverse angle four slash, and uh, again, get out of there. Again, it is important to realize that if we have uh, made a deep stab or slash uh, to the threat's neck that we've already won the fight, he's gonna bleed out. We're gonna play smart, limit any exposure to injury as much as possible. A safe place to avoid an attack is to continually circle 
uh, using the step and drag moment at movement as though we are defending on angles one and four. Again, this knife is going to be coming from this side, so we're going to be using the angle one and four type of uh, uh, defense, or again, slashing back and forth on angles three and four to let him know, you know, stay away from this area. He's already been cut up. He's probably going to want to stay away. Uh, now, again, with the uh, knife and the threat's rear hand, uh, we do have the opportunity to deliver a large helping of Thai kicks to his lead leg. Again, he's leading with his right leg, and he's got the knife in the back in his left hand, so this outer area of his thigh is going to be very exposed. Uh, in these situations, what we want to do is, uh, uh, well, first off, you have to have some kicking skills. You don't want to just start kicking if you haven't done a lot of this. You know, you definitely require uh, ramped up skills. What I like to do is I like to do a quick switch foot while fading with the uh, empty hand towards the threat's face. And then we come through with that rear uh, leg tie kick to the outside of his front thigh. And again, you know, when you're doing this, stuff has to stay tight. You can't be letting your hands go like this uh, as you throw this kick because his angle one is going to be coming right here if he's able to uh, maintain his composure. Uh, it's going to be hard for him to maintain composure. He's got the hand coming over his face. His knife may come up. Now you're going to be in low and you're going to hit him with that tie kick. This guy has to be a, uh, a very skilled fighter to be able to deal with that and still get an attack off, getting a counter attack off. Uh, so anyways, uh, we have to be ready to be counter. Uh, we have to be ready to counter after the kick and fortunately, we will be in our regular stance with our left lead because the initial switch foot, then the rear leg uh, tie kick coming through will put us back in our original stance and somewhat to the flank of this guy also. Uh, again, we're gonna uh, do this until comfortable, practice until comfortable, and we're gonna practice against as many different people and as styles as possible. So again, you want your buddy, you know, uh, uh, to, to do this both with a knife forward and a knife back. Uh, you know, a, a reverse grip and a forward grip, and you want him, even though the knife is in the back, you might want him to do some kind of holding the knife out front. You want him to do some holding the knife out back, uh, in back. You want him to do somewhere when you react to him, he tries to run away or uh, retreat as quick as possible. You want to do somewhere uh, when you do the technique, he tries to attack straight forward as quickly as possible. You want to do somewhere, you know, he just kind of goes like this in a kind of a, uh, a startle response and then you will have the easiest time at that point uh, to uh, uh, finish your, uh, your attack on him. So now you're in the back end. Okay, so just one time real slow. Basically just coming in here, pushing off here. This thing goes in here. Now again I can step through again or I mean I could uh, step and drag again or I can step through come around and get this. So again, I want, I, want to, I want the technique to have two big mortal wounds. This big mortal wound here, and this big try here. Just to speed that up a little bit. Like this, bam, bam, bam. And again, as soon as this guy gets, starts directing me, I'm gonna take advantage of this. So that time I was checking the far shoulder, you know, his knife had to keep from turning this way at me. Uh, if he had turned the other way, he might have had a little more success. And at that point, I would have had to spin off. This time, I try to, uh, when I get back here, when I try to get here, spin away from me that way. And try to come around and attack me that way. I think you were pushing it all the this way. Right, right. Again, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make like in street fight videos, you see two guys having street fight, is their footwork. They can't effectively move to the right spot while they continue their attacks. Thus they wind up going straight forward and straight backwards. And thus they always wind up being right on the guy's fighting center where they cannot uh, take damage. 
uh, by far the first real skill of a, uh, a skilled fighter is his ability to maneuver while he's looking for targets and acquiring targets such that he's avoiding the other guy's attack. So again, you know, if you're checking a guy who can't maneuver at an advanced level in the first place, the checks become highly effective. See, that time I was trying to hold off this shoulder, his knife hand shoulder, from turning around towards me. Instead, he went the other route because I had nothing holding him here. And so once I feel that uh, distance, I mean that, uh, that escape, I just back off. We can start again. <clears throat> now see, this is where I like him. I've gotten tucked in here. This is where I prefer them. Try to turn to your left. Try to turn to your right. And just stay on them here. That's why I like this much better. But again, if I do get stuck over here, try to turn towards me, that's a good spot for me. But if he goes the other way, I really have no way to hold him. So I just need to uh, take a step back, build a, build a gap, uh, spin the center line, get off of this guy. Okay, so uh, here, let's try that. Okay, now you kind of went from my arm with the uh, knife. Yeah. Just go for the knife and watch. Oh no, this is the one where we used to do this. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Okay, so right. Give me your card. There you go. We have not, you haven't done that. <laughs> Give me keys, bitch. Oh, nice. Nice. Give me keys. Now there you can see, because Scotty doesn't hook up on that first arm right away, he has to chase me a little more because I have room to move. And especially the problem is I'm not turning this way towards him. I'm continuing to go this way. So we wind up chasing each other around a circle. Now is it working well for me? It's not working well for me because he's stabbing me up all over my back. And now I want to turn the other way, but he grabs me on the shoulder and he does it the right way. Especially with the knife. Well, yeah, you can do it either way. You can, you can do it either way. You had been trying to chase this way. Right. My problem was, was I kept turning this way, so you're chasing me and I'm chasing you. Yeah. But then this is the easiest way to stop me from chasing you. The problem is, is that then I can try to get the knife on you, right? So that's why it's good to go over here. But again, again, this stuff comes down to your personal preference. If you like keep chasing this guy around and you like having that gap and trying to attack this shoulder with your free hand, that's great. You want to be tighter? Grab this one. That's the one to grab. It just stops everything you're right on this guy. 
but then you need to get off him as soon as you get your, your final cuts in. Did a pretty good job. He actually came over the top and hooked it, which is very effective. Hooking over the top of here, it's kind of the same thing as hooking this shoulder here. I really couldn't go either way. The only way I really could go was down. You can kick my leg out. You would have. Okay, so that pretty much is. Oh yeah, let me do one where I just back off. Okay, now I'm going to do one where I just back off. And uh, what he'll do is he'll just try to get some cuts in and reestablish uh, his position, and then we can go for it again. So again, you see the way a stalemate occurs pretty quickly. Again, you're moving around. You're going to find an avenue for escape, or you're going to chop this guy up eventually. The problem is, he's just got too far to go to bring his knife into the fight. Now this time, when I bring the finger up, I'm going to attack. Okay. Give the knife. Again, he got off to the flank. He got his hand on this shoulder. I couldn't turn towards him. Too far of a distance for me to bring the knife into the fight. And uh, he's safe. So definitely uh, this situation where you turn the tables on this guy, you try to get a couple cuts, uh, he's just avoiding you. And again, he wanted your car, he didn't want to get killed. He's going to leave at that point. Yeah, if, if he's that guy, he's going to leave. Otherwise, you know, now you can, uh, you know, that might be the time to try to bring a kick in. I mean, this guy's just running away from you. I mean, you got to be careful at that point because then it turns into a knife fight and you turn into the aggressor again in California you might have a big problem or states like that you might have a big problem you know maybe now you just back towards your car knees back all right dude you see a bit you're gonna bite off more you can chew it's time to go home yeah I'll probably agree with you And again, because he doesn't know where you're going, he's virtually stepping right in that knife. I had to make sure I pulled it because I was going to just jam it too far down his uh, throat. Yeah. Again, he got a little nick on me there, a little nick. Pull your money right now. All right, so that's pretty good. We kind of murphied that thing up a little bit. And uh, we'll move on to the next one. 